presidential executive orders require the Army National Guard to implement and maintain environmental management systems. An environmental management system, referred to as EMS, is a tool used by organizations worldwide to manage both positive and negative impacts on the natural environment. The Army National Guard is committed to continual improvement of operations that support the military mission by adhering to policies and visions that lead to a sustainable future for operations and installations. The Army National Guard uses EMS as the framework to achieve environmental goals and objectives to improve soldier training and mission readiness and to preserve natural and cultural resources. An effective EMS reduces costs, improves day-to-day -day operations, and leads to a more sustainable future for people of our nation and the world. This video showcases some of the best EMS success stories of the Army National Guard. I'm Colonel Michael Bouchard, G4 for the Army National Guard Directorate. I oversee the Environmental Programs Division, the Installations Division, the Logistics Division, and Army National Guard Sustainability Team. Our mission is to support every individual in the Army National Guard by providing timely and accurate logistics, installation management, and environmental programs to ensure sustainable operational readiness in the support of state, national, and global initiatives. We are in a very complex and uncertain financial environment, and we face growing competition from limited resources. With a strong command emphasis and participation from all, a properly functioning environmental management system will produce a great return on investment. This is especially true in the important areas of energy security and limited water resources. Leveraging our EMS will lead to continual improvement in providing the most cost-effective and sustainable full-time support of our soldiers. I encourage my staff to extend their complete support to the EMS and I also encourage you to support and embrace the EMS within your state. I believe we can be the best in the Department of Defense, and I believe the environmental management system is an important tool to that end. Hello, my name is Colonel Michael Bennett. I'm the Chief of the Army National Guard's Environmental Programs Division. I'm just going to take a few minutes and tell you a little bit about what EMS is and how it can help you better support the mission. Okay, the four basic elements of EMS are plan, do, check, act. Under the plan, you take a look at, at really what your environmental impacts and aspects are, and you develop a plan to accomplish them. Uh, do, you carry out the plan. Check, you ensure that the plan is working. And then act, you readjust your plan if necessary. If it's not working, look for additional goals to achieve. And the intention of combining all these four elements is a commitment for continual improvement as we move forward. It's key that you take a look at your at your job. I mean, what do you do? Just about everything we do within the Army National Guard and the Army has some type of environmental impact. And that's going to vary from position to position, your role and, and what you do in the unit. Uh, I, I encourage you as you're doing your day-to-day -day jobs, look, look at those different aspects and look at ways you can improve processes. Uh, how can you better impact the environment? EMS over the years has produced a number of successes and as you go through this video you'll see a number of case studies where these successes are outlined. The results that a number of our states have achieved uh, kind of speak volumes about how successful this program can be. Hi, I'm Major Andy Coons, Michigan Army National Guard uh, Environmental Program Manager, and I'm here to talk a little bit about the, uh, our environmental management system. A sustainable training environment is key to our mission. Uh, our EMS has, has changed and has evolved, um, all uh, due to our, uh, our senior leader's vision, and uh, we, I feel that we have a strong 
uh, management foundation for the current environmental programs that we have in place for like hazardous waste, uh, clean water, uh, cultural natural resources and things like that. But uh, right now our, uh, our focus is, is energy independence, uh, energy and conservation awareness, um, and uh, seeking new technologies to uh, eventually uh, become net zero energy, uh, net zero water, net zero waste uh, down the road. And uh, that now is our EMS focus. The Environmental Office has a long history of, uh, of winning awards on the, on the National Guard Bureau level, the uh, Department of the Army, and even the DOD level. We're really, really proud of these awards, and they, they uh, span from uh, compliance-related uh, awards to natural resources, cultural resources, and are, uh, are actively uh, um, partner. Are, we're actively partnering with uh, with community uh, organizations and other uh, government organizations, and that's uh, that's as, that's been key to our success. And, uh, and uh, like I said, the awards are are evident of that. Um, CW4 Richard Wilder. I'm with the Michigan Army National Guard, and here at CSMS, I am the supervisor for the Allied Trade Section. Here at CSMS, we use the Closed Loop Advanced Water Jet System, acronym is CLAWS. We use that for removing our paint and rust from vehicles and equipment prior to actually the repainting process. It's a closed loop system, which means the water that we use for the blasting is filtered, the contaminants are filtered out, and water is reused again. The system is capable of 40,000 PSI, about three gallons a minute. That removes all paint, rust, and particulate matter from the vehicles, and it, it saves time on the prepping. We get a much cleaner job, and it makes it easier for the painters to paint it. Using the Type 2 water-based cart paint has very low VOCs, uh, so it's really good for the environment and it puts on a durable finish. We've been using that paint now for about, about six years and we're starting to see some of these vehicles come back and there's very little difference between the surface of a vehicle that was painted six years ago and what we just painted yesterday. We took the time, we did some studying, we found some variable speed compressors that promoted energy savings, they're more dependable. So working with the environmental section, we worked with the, the state engineers, we was able to put together a bid and we had a contractor install these compressors. The compressors have been on operation probably about six, seven months, and we're averaging just around 11,000 kilowatt hours savings per month, a decrease from what we use with the old rotary compressors. They're quieter, they're less mechanical breakdowns. We're not getting the water through the airlines like we did with the previous compressors. It's a win-win, the mechanics like it, the technicians on the floor are all appreciative of it. What you can do when you partnership with the environmental and the safety people and the state engineers, you can make good things happen. My name is Major Jim Robson. I'm the Camp Grayling Facility Engineer. Uh, we are now at the Camp Grayling Recycle Center. Our recycle center is a uh, grassroots initiative to support the QRP. And what we're doing here is we're taking out the low-hanging fruit from our waste stream. What we're doing is the easy stuff, the stuff that the troops pull away and anything that we can sell and get value or salvage. But this is just the tip of the iceberg and, and how we run our recycle program. Um, most of our uh, earned value comes from our demolition processes where we tear down buildings and it's ingrained in my employee's effort to ensure that we minimize how many loads go to the landfill. So between this uh, program here and what we take from our demo pro processes, it's a completely self-revenue generating program. We're standing here at what we call the ORTC. We have a motor pool, we have uh, the barracks, open bay barracks, BOQs, the mess halls, our company buildings, all in one spot. One of the unique features about this site in our recycling initiatives is that we reused an existing site with its applicable infrastructure. We tore down 47 buildings here, of which we put efforts into recycling all the materials for those buildings. We had an earned value in this project of about $1.5 million in just reclaiming our concrete. All the buildings are high energy efficiency. We had a 25% gain in square footage on our posts, but only a 10% gain in utility consumption. We're here at CSMS. I'm Staff Sergeant Chris Krause. Uh, this is where we do our antifreeze recycling for the state of Minnesota. Uh, all units can come in, bring whatever 55 gallon barrels, whatever antifreeze they have. We also support all the FMSs, mates, whoever needs to drop off antifreeze, and we do all the recycling here. But in this machine, we'll suck up a barrel, a 55 gallon barrel of antifreeze. 
And what this machine does is it actually separates all the straight glyco, the water, and then the waste. For every four, five to six barrels of uh, antifreeze that we recycle, we'll get one barrel of waste. This bay was designed to clean four M60 battle tanks simultaneously. The, uh, the main bay is, is fixed with an oil water separator. You can see the trench drains over there by the doors on either side. What they do is they bring the tanks in face first, barrel first, and they bring them in beyond those trench drains so that any of the fluids that are going down the drain go, are held in the oil water separator. On the side over here, you'll see we have these high pressure watchers called Azure Blues. The solvent that's used in here is actually a detergent soap that is designed for barrel cleaning. It's an amazing thing. It cuts through all the carbon. A tank crew, one single tank crew, can clean their bore in about 15 minutes as opposed to four hours in the field. That includes lubrication, uh, everything except the breach. They do not clean the breaches here. They do that at mates. This solvent tank is used for crew serve weapons. It's similar to the Claris machines that we have inside. It's a little bit bigger because we need to be able to put a 50 cal in here. Again, there's two stations and the machine is basically running all by itself. Uh, this would be a rinse. These brushes also uh, have the breakthrough through them. It's the same solvent that's used in the other machines. It, it literally eats carbon away, and yet it's very environmentally friendly. It's also very friendly to the soldier and anybody else that's in their hand. I have no problem, absolutely none. Camp Ripley's environmental uh, office determined that weapons cleaning was causing a lot of waste streams to be dumped in inappropriate places, and bivouac areas, CLP was winding up on the ground, weapons cleaning patches were winding up in trash cans and, and ultimately at the landfills. Uh, it was determined at that time that a facility would be nice to have which would provide soldiers a very adequate place to clean weapons, a comfortable place to clean weapons, and we could also control the waste streams that were leaving the ECF. As a result of that, <clears throat> you look around the ECF, you can see that we've provided the soldiers a lot of great equipment. We, we uh, have reduced the waste streams to, to near zero and as a result, weapons are getting cleaned much better. And the uh, equipment cleaning facility has been in operation now for uh, almost 11 years. And it is a very popular place for soldiers to come and clean their weapons. The time uh, used for cleaning weapons has been greatly reduced. The ECF probably sees several thousand weapons coming through a year. And that's a very, very small amount of waste. None of it is going to landfills. None of it is going into groundwater. It is absolutely contained. Hello, I'm CW2 Matthew Ingmar with Bravo Company, first of the 108th Aviation in Salina, Kansas. Uh, we've recently undergone a uh, full facility lighting upgrade uh, to uh, promote energy efficiency in our armory. Uh, previously, all of our lighting in our facility uh, was not eco-friendly, uh, going from our drill floor uh, to all the classrooms. The lights took approximately 10 or 15 minutes to turn on. Um, and our electric bills were high because of this. Uh, within the last two months, every room of our armory and drill floor has been upgraded uh, to the newer type lighting, and uh, motion sensors will be installed on all of the walls. So uh, after a period of uh, 10 minutes of no motion, the uh, lights will automatically turn off on their own. So uh, some of the benefits for us is uh, obviously brighter lighting and uh, the need to only stock one type of bulb, uh, which helps us when we go to order, and also the disposition of the uh, green type bulbs uh, helps us in the hazmat aspect. The exterior lighting has been upgraded with LED uh, lights as well, which also helps our physical security because you can uh, see more clearly. So we've petitioned to get uh, green type fixtures, low flow toilets, um, paperless hand drying systems, uh, to kind of counter that uh, so our impact on the environment is less and we actually save, save uh, money. And uh, it's a, a, probably a bigger investment at the time when it's done, but with us and the amount of traffic and the way the facilities are used, I think in the future it will definitely pay off. It'll save the guard a lot of money and it will also promote uh, environmental awareness above our, around our soldiers because they'll see that they're helping the environment and uh, maybe they'll carry that home. As with any piece of equipment, there are the potential for pollutants. Here in our facility, we have this trough, which has a lateral that goes outdoors into a water separator, 
so that pollutants do not enter our waste stream. And from our maintenance bay, we have a, la we have a lateral that follows all the way out to our wash rack facility. And out here we have a very simplistic mechanical device so that when our wash rack is turned on, a trap door closes, and then rainwater does not have to be treated by our wastewater treatment plant here in the city. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Terrell with the Kansas Army National Guard Directorate of Facilities Engineering. I'm working on uh, energy efficiency and renewable energy projects, and one of the big projects we're working on here is a systematic rollout of interior 2x4 suspended ceiling lighting fixtures. Uh, with this rollout, we're replacing approximately 4,500 fixtures in a consistent way across the state at our armories and our state-funded facilities. They provide a huge energy savings, approximately 35 to 45 percent in our electrical costs throughout the state. I'm Keith Braun with Missouri Army National Guard. I'm the Deputy Director of Environmental Management. Since we've started using EMS in accordance with ISO standard 14001, we've been able to make a cultural change within the organization. With that change, not only are we able to make the large ticket item improvements, but our soldiers and civilians are able to make improvements at the local level. When we go out and do our assessments at our sites, we're finding more sites that have no negative findings at all. We have fewer major findings, and when there are minor findings, our personnel are much quicker at resolving those findings. As part of the Missouri Army National Guard family, we're all more aware of our impact on the environment. We all feel more empowered to make improvements that continually improve the environmental status of the Missouri Army National Guard. This leads us to a more sustainable future that will support the military mission. Hello, my name is Dean Lamb. I'm the Environmental Compliance Section Chief with the Missouri National Guard. And today I want to talk to you specifically about these bioremediation-based parts washers that are right here next to me. And we deploy these bioremediation-based parts washers throughout the entire state, all of the FMS locations and the CSMS. And we've had great results from the, as far as the technicians are concerned with regard to operation of the machine. Uh, they're more uh, environmentally friendly. There's no volatile organic compounds associated with this fluid. They don't require all the PPE that traditional parts washers that are based on a, a volatile organic type solvent requires. And so it's been a real win-win for the Missouri National Guard. And today I want to talk to you about the Missouri National Guard AVCRAD, in which they perform all sorts of maintenance related functions and painting of not only components, but also now with the addition of this new building, Total Frame Aircraft. Um, as a result of painting these total frame aircraft, there's going to be obviously some more waste generated with that. And as identified through our process via the environmental management system, we identified waste reduction as one of our significant aspects, which when you are a large quantity generator of hazardous waste, accompanies um, more restrictions, uh, more likelihood for inspections from the regulators, and it's just a place we don't want to be. This system has been installed. It's operational and it's going to save the Missouri National Guard roughly sixty dollars to $80,000 a year in disposal fees and also be a sustainable piece to the AVCRED for the future. Great job you're doing on the ground. It can really impact that program. Uh, bring those ideas forward to leadership. Some of our best ideas implemented throughout the Army National Guard uh, started at the lowest level and that's going to be key to moving forward with our EMS and making that an even more successful program. I believe the EMS will allow us to better compete in an environment of limited resources and I know it will improve our energy and water security. Thank you for all you do and I look forward to meeting you.